to pop out some vegetation here we have to because county requires that we cut a road to the property that goes down to the and you can't see it but at the bottom of the hill here there's a there's a um, a platted road it was uh platted in the 70s and it was the road was cut then but since then nothing's happened with it i mean there it's basically a two track now but uh anyway We've got, so we've got a, we're supposed to cut a road from the property that goes down to that road. Um, and so we've got to come right through here. That means we're going to take out that big, that big uh, greasewood bush right there. And then from there on, all we really have to take out is a little bit of this angel grass and um, yucca. We'll do it. We'll speed the camera up here because this is going to be slow going for us. So. this and we were popping out bushes and stuff as we go but for the most part we're just driving down there using dumpy and this dumpy's got plenty of power and nice low gears to do this kind of work but um, yeah so we're this is a, a ditching blade that we have set backward that we use to sort of smooth out our roads here we'll get this uh, we'll just keep going round and round with this thing until we get some semblance of a road then we'll go back clear out where we can or where we should do and just keep doing this over and over and over that's and that and actually using the road once it's cut is going to be the key to you know keeping it decent Yesterday, Robert and I got about, I don't know, 75 yards of this road, cleaned up a little bit. There's still some stuff in it, as you can see, but <clears throat> I'm hoping that over time, as we drive over it and keep smoothing it over and stuff like that, that it'll, <clears throat> it will get better, like the other roads we've done out here that way. But uh, as you can see, that area right there is just full of this yucca. And uh, so we have to pop it out of here because uh, it'll just create a huge hump in the road if we don't. And uh, it's really hard to, we thought we could scrape it out of here with a grater and that has helped some, but we really need to get in here, dig down and pop these things out and pop their roots out so that we get a better road. 
So that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to finish up this area here, smooth this over, try to level it a little like we've done here. I know it's not perfect, but, and then, uh, you know, just keep working our way up the hill. There are patches of this, not all of it's like this, but there are patches of it that we need to clear out. And we've been working on this road, you know, for a while, and we've, with these yucca and things that we've been pulling out, we just been popping them out with a shovel and, uh, you know, doing the best we can, but so as I was out there using the tiller just now, it occurred to me, why don't I use the tiller to knock down these mounds and see if I can make this road building job a little easier. So we'll try that. It's a beautiful morning. Just a real slight breeze. Winds maybe a couple of miles an hour. And uh, there's our well and Wi-Fi station. Behind it is the house pad, you know, the foundation. And uh, down there is the river. And um, we're in snow melt season, so you can see that these old extinct traces of the river, the little oxbows, there's one, uh, there's another, there's another over there. They're all filling with water. The river is just beyond those and among those trees. So, and then it, the river runs along that escarpment way back there. But uh, yeah, so we're in snow melt. <clears throat> the river's up. It's almost time to go run the, it's almost time to go run the river rapids downstream. So maybe we'll do that this year just for grins. Anyway. Today, I got to keep working on the road, and you can see where we cut it, and it goes off in the distance there, but there's a lot of plant life in that area that I got to dig out of the road so we can smooth it out. So I'll do some more of that today. Robert and I were way down at the end yesterday, and we cleared a bunch of stuff out of the road bed there, so we'll just continue to dig at it, and then at some point here pretty quickly we have to actually start driving on this thing to get it uh, packed down so i'll do that i'm gonna go dig some stuff out roscoe what is this what is this roscoe do you want it do you want it do you want it huh? do you want it you ready you ready here we go go get it roscoe come here buddy Come here. Give me that. Give me that. Where is it? Give me that. Give me that. Go get it. Give me that. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it. Uh, give it. Give it. Give it. Give me that. Give it to me. Come on, let me have it. Ah, 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 ah. You're not gonna let me have it, are you? Now you'll drop it and I'll get it. Let me have that, ah. give it to me. Let me have it, give me that. Okay, you ready? Go get it, Roscoe. <laughs> give it to me. Ah. All right. What you doing, Robert? I'm filling in more of this dirt. You seem so happy about it, too. <laughs> what we got for him. But, um, uh, so yeah. So today we're just sort of backfilling. We're continuing to backfill in here. As you can tell, we got some cleanup to do. And we got some grinding to do because when we poured this concrete, it was setting fast. We didn't have a lot of time. And so as you can see, there's some high spots here on here that we need to grind off. And I started grinding. So I started grinding here, you know, to sort of knock these high spots down and uh, started using that four and a half inch Makita angle grinder that I've got. But I quickly realized that this is a bigger job than that thing can handle. So 
So I got a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 15 amp, seven inch or nine inch, but I can only find a seven inch diamond grinder. Uh, grinding, uh, grinding grinder thing. Oh, this is a happy day, folks. First, some news. Uh, come to find out that this county that we're in, that has never had any building codes, and the and that's one reason why we chose it, because we're building an alternative style home, and didn't want to have to mess with the codes, you know. Um, but come to find out that uh, come last July 1st, 2023, they adopted some of the most stringent codes uh, that there are out there. The 2018 IRC plus the 2018 IEEC energy codes. So a bit of a disappointment there, but, you know, I was planning to build the home to, to code spec anyway. Um, just not that stringent. Anyway... So we've had to have inspections done. And the first inspection was the in-ground plumbing, which passed, awesome. And we had a second inspection today for the foundation. And it passed also, so I feel pretty good. It's nice that, you know, it's really intimidating when you're an owner builder, you know, you're doing all this yourself. And, you know, somebody comes out to inspect your work uh, to make sure that it agrees with code and uh you know you get nervous and you think gosh what's he going to find what am i going to have to redo what am i going to have to tear out you know all that kind of stuff but to have him come out and say um that this is one of the best permanent wood foundation constructions that he's ever seen that made me feel really good i mean he told us we're doing it right he had nothing he found no problems at all with any of our work and uh, he said, keep going, keep building. I told him some of the other things I want to do, like build my own eye joists and stuff like that. And we'll have to have those tested and stamped by a structural engineer. So that's sort of a downer, but I still think it'll be cheaper than buying them. Anyway, so I uh, just want to share that. It's a happy day. <laughs> it's a happy day. It's good when they come out and don't find any problems at all with anything you've done. And tell you to keep going so oh so nice anyway rejoice with us you know i didn't tell robber uh about this foundation inspection because she worries and uh, i just didn't you know, i just didn't want her to worry and i figured anything that they tell me needs to change i'll just change and you know that'll be that but now that she knows that inspections are <laughs> so i told her today that we had this inspection and she's like you you withheld from me. It's like, yes, I know, but I didn't want you to worry. And we passed. And we got good marks on it, too. Said some of the best work he's seen. So uh, so she's like, okay, I forgive you then. Okay. So I'm standing here in front of Buzz, our mobile solar generator, because we have a little bit of a confession to make. We've been out here full-time now for four uh, four years uh, on this homestead and um, you know just doing our thing building away and for the most part we have relied I mean almost exclusively on solar power for our needs and all coming from buzz and a little bit from that solar setup for the well um, but um, at times, we have used propane. I don't like using propane. I'd rather not use propane. But for the time being, until the house is finished, uh, we're forced to rely on it um, for heating water and cooking. Um, but uh, that's, that's all we use propane for. But um, a couple of winters ago, and then this past winter, uh, the temperatures 
and the shorter days were have been really hard on Buzz's batteries. These are Buzz's batteries. Uh, they were new two years ago. More than that, three years ago? It was two years ago. Yeah, and uh, they're already, uh, you know, so um, discharged, uh, you know, partly because of temperatures in this harsh climate, partially because of short days, um, stuff like that, that it's, you know, they, they provide electricity, but not as, not nearly as much as they used to. Now we did upgrade Buzz's uh, panel, you know, modules uh, to provide us, you know, to capture more PV energy uh, during the day, particularly in the winter when it's, you know, when it's rough. That doesn't help the batteries when they're super cold at 20, 20 below zero. Uh, and the days are, you know, the daylight's about uh, six and a half hours. And we use, you know, a fair amount of power during the day because we work. Um, I work here from the homestead on the computer online all day. You know, it suffered. It suffered from being out here in this environment. Now, when this area of the house is finished out, is framed up and finished out, there will be a solar room right here in this corner with a door that allows access from the outside. And that's where we will move all of our solar stuff into. Um, some of it from Buzz and some of it new. One of the new things we need to get is, is a new set of batteries. But in the meantime, and I'm hoping we don't have to replace Buzz's batteries, the ones in there, I'm hoping we can get by with them, you know, for another winter. Uh, and then hopefully by that time, things will be finished out there and we don't need to worry about it anymore. But uh, in the meantime, we decided to finally bite the bullet and confess that we can't be 100% self-sufficient out here right now. And we bought one of these. Anyway, uh, today's project is to build an enclosure box for this here uh, to keep it secure. And also because this blowing wind and sand and everything, it's getting dirty and I don't want sand getting in those um, receptacles. Okay, well this is as far as we've gotten today. <laughs>